In the last video, uh, when we talked about secondary structure, we talked about alpha helices. In this video, we're going to talk about beta pleated sheets and sort of focus on them. They are still part of secondary structure, uh, so we're still talking about hydrogen bonds between the backbone of a polypeptide chain. Um, but let's talk about a few details of beta pleated sheets, sort of what they are, what's important about them, and how we can understand them. So beta pleated sheets are really just that. So the, the the polypeptide chain ends up sort of making these little, they make little sheets, which sounds kind of you know straightforward and, and weird when I say that, but um, we end up making these little um, sheets that have bends in them like this, right? And then imagine the polypeptide chain being like that, and it'll be right next to another sheet like this. So this might not make sense just yet, but um, what I kind of wanted to jot down about beta pleated sheets is that they're basically just polypeptide, I'm going to abbreviate polypeptide as PPT, polypeptide chains, okay, um, that sort of are adjacent to each other. Okay, and um, specifically about this, um, and, and they're actually held together via hi the hydrogen bonds. So if this is one uh, beta pleated sheet, one right next to it, right, these these are going to be held together, you know, with uh, hydrogen bonds between the backbone. Okay, so these little green things here are H bonds between the backbone. Okay, so specifically between the backbone, they're between the carbonyl uh, oxygens and the um, and the amide nitrogens. Okay, so um, now these these chains can run either parallel or anti-parallel, and I'll kind of explain that in just a moment by drawing it out. Another thing I wanted to mention about about um, beta pleated sheets is that when we have these these polypeptide chains running like this, the R groups the R groups um, alternate pointing above the plane and below the plane. Um, again, I'm going to depict all this. I just want to jot down these notes before I actually begin drawing them out. Uh, they alternate pointing up and down or above and below the sheet okay um, the actual alpha carbons each of these little bends here these little bends that we call the pleats um, the pleats come from our are, you know that bend there is the alpha carbon and I'll draw that out in just a moment okay um, so one thing to sort of understand particularly and, and how you know the beta pleated sheets are a little bit different than alpha helices is that their H bonds okay are perpendicular to the direction of the polypeptide. Again, I'm abbreviating polypeptide as PPT. So um, remember, this is actually opposite um, the alpha helix, which had the, the hydrogen bonds were parallel to the axis of the helix. So I want to explain this now, draw this out, and make a little bit more sense. Um, so let me let me show you how this would sort of work. Um, if we have uh, a polypeptide chain that looks like this, let's draw this like this. Now bear with me for this. This is this might be a little bit tough. Okay, let's say we have an amino group here. Okay, and this would be the alpha carbon here. Um, this would be carbonyl. Now I haven't drawn amino acids like this for you just yet, um, but you can imagine this being the amino group and then um, uh, this here, this alpha carbon will have an R group 
and a hydrogen here. Um, and the next, you know, the, 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 this um, this here would be the, you know, what was the carboxyl group connected to the next amino group. So then this here is also an alpha carbon with its own R group pointing down, and then a hydrogen as well. Okay, and this here would be the carboxyl terminus. Okay, let's just make this a really, really short sort of chain. Okay, where this is the N terminus and this is the C terminus. So imagine this being uh, a short sort of uh, polypeptide chain. This could run um, right next to another polypeptide chain that uh, looks kind of like this. And, and I'm actually going to draw this a little bit. Um, I'm going to draw it from the inside first here, just to be be as thorough as possible. Okay. You'll see why I'm drawing it like this in just a moment. Okay, and here's the carbonyl group. Then this is the alpha car the next alpha carbon. So this has an R group here and a hydrogen here. And then we have another um, carbonyl group. Then a white hydrogen. <clears throat> another R group up here. H here. Maybe already some of you are, are kind of seeing how this whole um, how these little notes here sort of play you know play into what I'm drawing here. Um, now let me kind of point it out specifically what I'm trying to get at. So I mentioned over here that the polypeptide chains are adjacent to each other. So I'm sure you can see that this is this is one polypeptide chain. This is another, um, and they're right next to each other. Now this could go on and on and on and on and further. Um, and so could this one. I'm just drawing it here just as a short sort of um, representative model. Now I mentioned that the hydrogen bonds are perpendicular to the direction of the chains. So the H bond would actually be just like this right here in between the carbonyl oxygen and the amide hydrogen. So there would be that um, that there. Now I, that's the only one I'm drawing here just because I don't have uh, much room, but then you can imagine that if this continued on, we would keep having a bunch of different H bonds here and here, here and there. Um, but essentially, what I wanted to get at is to sort of explain is that if you have um, a polypeptide chain next to another one uh, and they run ad adjacent to each other, um, they can run parallel or anti parallel. And I'll get to the difference between that in just a moment. But the point is that these the hydrogen bonds that will actually be holding those those chains together are perpendicular to the overall direction of the you know the two the two strands which brings me to this idea of parallel or anti parallel so notice that this this chain is running um n to c right and this chain is also running n to c they're both running in the same direction so that would be considered parallel okay because both of them are running in the same direction n to c now we could have one going n to c and one going c to n or um that would be considered anti-parallel. So if you have if you have um, you know n to c run, running right next to n to c, that would be considered parallel. Whereas anti-parallel or anti-parallel would be if you had one polypeptide chain running n to c and another one running uh, the opposite way. Okay, this would be anti-parallel. Okay, so I mentioned that the R groups would be alternating pointing up and pointing down above and below the plane. So what am I getting at there? Well, that's just this right here. So notice that in this chain we have an R group going pointing up and then the next one the R group is pointing down. Here we've got up and then down, up and then the next one would be down. But um, the point is that they would alternate there. So I'm going to put a little star in purple here so you understand that, that this, uh, this the circling of these, these R groups in purple is sort of explaining this point here. Okay, and the pleats are the alpha carbons, and I'm sure you can see that. So I'll point I'll point that out with I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's do let's do orange or or whatever this color is. <laughs> um, so the pleats are the alpha carbons. So here is an alpha carbon where the R group is attached, as is this one. Those little bends, right, are the actual alpha carbons. There and there. Okay. Um, and the H bonds are perpendicular to the direction of the of the polypeptide chain. Um, so so what is what is really going on with this whole whole idea? We can imagine this. Uh, let me let me sort of depict this one more way. Um, if we have a sheet running N to C like this, 
right? This is the beginning of a beta pleated sheet, right? Then, for whatever reason, this is a theme that we would see in, you know, some sort of globular protein or um, really just any protein. But let's say at a certain point it just sort of stops, and then we have like this long string of amino acids that doesn't really have any sort of theme to it, right? But then, as it comes back, then we have a, a beta pleated sheet, right? And then it just sort of, you know, goes off and does its own thing again. This kind of looks crazy. But then, as it comes back, we got more pleats, right? So what I'm trying to get at, really, is that, first of all, this is the end terminus. This end here, I made a C terminus. Okay, let me uh, make that <laughs> a little bit neater. Now, this obviously looks ridiculous and crazy, but I really only want you to pay attention to this inside portion here um, of these sheets, right? This here is what we're trying to talk about when we're talking about... Um, beta pleated sheets is that they're a, th a theme, a secondary structure theme. So here we have this chain going N to C, right? So this here, this portion of the pleat here on top would be going N to C, right? Or this, this last end here would be the C terminus, right? Then we keep going, keep going, keep going. And then going here, right, after all these crazy turns, we end up coming back. So this is here at the beginning of the N, right? And we're going all the way to the C at the end here, right? And then we go and do some more crazy turns, and then we come back and we go N to C again, right? So these are these these beta pleated sheets or beta pleated sheets are running anti-parallel. Now that's a little bit crazy, but the whole idea is that these these themes can be present in proteins that that you know have these all kinds of crazy folded directions. The cool thing about alpha helices or, or beta pleated sheets is that you might find beta pleated sheets in one area of a protein, maybe. Um, Alpha, alpha helices elsewhere. The point is that there are themes. One more thing I want to mention specifically about beta pleated sheets is that they can be, um, they can exist between um, polypeptide chains of, you know, either a single polypeptide chain in this case, right? I didn't really pick up the pen as I was drawing all these different white lines that look kind of crazy. But um, this is all one polypeptide. So the this thing, right, um, is just one polypeptide. Beta pleated sheets can exist between different polypeptide chains. So um, let's say I have you know this, and then I draw another polypeptide chain that's actually not connected as part of this long one here, and then I start. Maybe I should put that put that in a different color. Um, if I draw another polypeptide chain that you know starts off crazy like this, and then um, this being the end terminus, and then you know it continues on, and then it, it somehow gets next to this polypeptide chain, right? Then we have quaternary structure, right? Because then we have um, Another, you know, a second polypeptide chain, and then maybe it comes back again. Who knows, right? But the point is, this can be some sort of crazy protein with an enter with a carboxy terminus, right? But the point is, this theme here still exists. I know this is crazy messy, but um, I mean that's biochem for you, I suppose. <laughs> um, but hopefully that was a little bit helpful in terms of kind of visualizing what a beta pleated sheet is. I definitely encourage you to look up these, uh, you know, maybe photos or diagrams of these on you know, on Google or in a textbook or whatever it is that um, you're using to study. But anyways, I, was, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.